what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is Hey y'all, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife I'm so glad you're here My name's Leslie And you're here down on the farm with me Today is our weekend wrap-up. We're just taking you through little bits and pieces of our weekend. And we're starting out with me and Caroline on our way to the apple orchard in Cana, Virginia. We're going to buy apples. And so enjoy some of the scenery. That's where we're picking up this weekend wrap-up. Guys, we're here at the first apple place that we're stopping at this is where I normally come and get my big boxes of apples and this is where we're gonna stop first and we're hoping we can get the boys to like not run around and stuff so <laughs> we'll see yeah it may not happen what you think buddy Okay, y'all. Well, we got um, two boxes of seconds. I always get seconds when it comes to apples um, because I'm just going to be cutting them up and I can cut out the bad spots. And so we got two boxes. I got a box of Brayburns and a box of Stamen, wine sap type. And so now we're at this little local flower, vegetable, produce stand that we always stop at. So we're going to go in here and see what we can find and get into. Okay guys, on the way back home, we stopped in the town where um, Bryant and I pastored, where Bryant pastored and we lived, Bryant and I lived for 15 years. And so we stopped by here and I'm gonna eat at a restaurant that um, used to be one of our 
favorites and um, so we're gonna you know have some nostalgia here and some sweet memories what is it Levi ranch. what is it ranch, ranch? Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, y'all, so it is sat now Saturday morning. Caroline and I went to the mountains yesterday, as you saw, just briefly. At one of the stores, I picked up some, um, at that produce stand, I picked up some country ham pieces. So, I've got those um, just soaking in a little bit of water. I soak off a little bit of the salt, um, but I, I didn't soak them overnight or anything. But... So I'm fixing breakfast. Isaac and Bryant are over at the farm working. So I'm fixing us breakfast. And I thought, you know, I haven't made my two ingredient biscuits in a long time. And that's kind of what put my channel out there was my two ingredient biscuit video. So we're gonna make two ingredient biscuits this morning. And I'm gonna get everything ready. I'll meet you back right here. We're gonna fry out some country ham. Isaac's wanting to try red eye gravy and I'm gonna make some sausage gravy. And Caroline has my applesauce in her freezer from the beach, and I told her last night to let it out, to set it out. Um, so I hope the boys will stop by there and get the applesauce, because I just love a biscuit with some gravy on it. Take a bite of that, and then a bite of my applesauce together. Oh my God. Okay, let me get my stuff, I'll be right back. Okay, on my first two ingredient biscuit, video i got a lot of questions about can i use whole milk can i use such and such you're going to use heavy cream and the reason is the, the you need this thickness and the fat content and so forth that the heavy cream offers i would not use any other kind of milk if you use buttermilk or sweet milk i would add lard to your self rising flour so okay with that being said i have two cups let me get you situated here i have two cups of self rising flour and i'm going to start out with a cup and a half of heavy cream and that's all you need to know because it's two ingredients you can add a little extra salt. self rising flour has salt already in it, but you can add a little extra. Often I do. And everybody was like, that's not two ingredients, that's three. It is a two ingredient biscuit, and if you would like extra salt, you can add extra salt. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a cup and a half of heavy cream. Now let me tell you, the texture of this biscuit is very different than what you're used to. Okay. Now I just start kind of pulling my flour and mixing it gently. It is a, I don't know how to how to describe the dough that it makes. It's a it's a thick, dense, heavy dough, but then the biscuits are so fluffy and wonderful. All right. Now, I believe I need a little extra flour. It looks a little too wet to me. So, I've got a little extra right here. I'm just gonna sprinkle with my fingers. And then we'll turn it out onto my board here. And I'll put down just a little bit to, it almost becomes like a Play-Doh consistency. <laughs> That's the best way I know how to describe it. It's kind of a sticky Play-Doh. But let me tell you, the biscuits turn out so fluffy, so beautiful. I have my oven preheating to um, 300, uh, 400, excuse me, 450 degrees. 450. And 
and I'm just getting my dough out here. Let me get it all. I'm going to scrape it all out. I don't want to miss anything. I'll be right back. All right, I've got it all out, so I'm going to sprinkle a little more flour, and we're just going to pat it out. You know how on your normal biscuits it's kind of shaggy looking? This is more of a smooth type dough. You're not going to have those shaggy bits that you do in a regular biscuit. So let me, I'm just going to fold it, crease it, fold it, and I'm going to fold it one more time. And then I'm going to pat it out. Now you can use a rolling pin. By folding it that way and, and doing it that way, you're kind of creating those, those flaky layers in your biscuit. All right. And I'm going to about a half inch to maybe a little, I would say a half inch because we like ours fairly thick. Okay. And I'm just going to take my biscuit cutter. And I have a, a greased cookie sheet here. I've already put a little oil on it. And we're going to get these biscuits on here. I like to put them up fairly close to each other. That helps them rise fluffier. It kind of gives them something to climb up. When they're up next to each other but if you like a crusty biscuit there's sometimes some certain things i want the outside to be kind of crusty and so then i separate them oh i twisted don't twist your biscuits either that kind of seals it and keeps them from rising just go straight down and pick it up Y'all, two ingredient biscuits are so good. You can see how smooth this dough is. Where when I make normal biscuits out of like um, self rising flour and lard and buttermilk or my formula ale and buttermilk, um, it's more of it's kind of shaggy and, and stringy. Not stringy, but I guess shaggy is the right word. where this is really a smooth, smooth dough. All right, it looks like I'm getting, I've gotten nine biscuits so far. It looks like I'm going to get about 10, uh, probably 11, maybe, maybe even 12, not sure. I think I'm going to get 11. Because I'll cut this one out, and then we'll make this one into a biscuit all of its own. So that's plenty of biscuits for the three of us. Right. There we go. Okay, so they're going to cook for about 12 to 15 minutes, anywhere in between there. I'll start watching at 12 minutes. Um, but they're just going to sit and hang out right now while I um, get everything else going. All right, everybody. There's some of our um, country ham. And I have the last two pieces going here in the cast iron skillet. I turned it down just a little bit. Um, do you see all those brown bits? Isaac is wanting to try red eye gravy. I don't fix that a lot because Bryant is not a fan of it. And I only like it on cantaloupe. I pour it over cantaloupe. And I think it is so delicious over cantaloupe. Um, and I don't have a cantaloupe. But Isaac is wanting to try red eye gravy today. So, uh, I'm keeping those brown bits in there. Um, I'm going to scoop up any little bit of oil that's in there and put into my egg frying pan and I'll fry my eggs in the ham grease. 
There's my sausage ready for my sausage gravy. And the biscuits have not gone in yet. I'm fixing to put them in. And I have four eggs just waiting to be scrambled. Okay guys, all I'm going to do to make this red eye gravy is I have some of our morning coffee here. I'm gonna turn the, I else I was gonna turn the burner on. Turn the burner back on and I'm just gonna add in And I'm going to scrape those bits up. This is just our morning coffee. All right. We're just going to scrape that up. It doesn't make a whole lot. But there it is. I'll pour it up in just a minute. All right, Mom, tell them what you're doing. Just finishing up the sausage gravy. It's gotten thick enough. We're fixing to pour it up. The country ham's over there. Good old Saturday morning breakfast right here. Show them the red-eye the... gravy in that little bowl. Red-eye gravy right there. Did you show them how to make that? Yep, I sure did. It mm -hmm. doesn't make a lot. No, it's very, very thin and doesn't make a whole lot. I mean, you don't deal. want it to taste like coffee. You mm -hmm. don't want it to be just coffee. Hey, tell them where we're going. We're going to Hang an on, auction sale. Hang on, back up. I interrupted you on the red-eyed gravy. I oh, didn't mean to. Oh, that's okay. I didn't mean to. I was to. just saying you don't want it to um, taste like coffee, so you only add a little bit, just enough to get those good bits up off the bottom. Tell them where we're going. We're going to an auction sale. What are we going to buy? He says cows. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. It's an estate auction. Man passed away. He's got a lot of tools, farm equipment, tractors, welders, uh, chain, chain binders, post hole diggers, and shotguns. So we're uh, going to see what we're going to buy today. So hang Look with us. Look at that gravy. Look here. at that gravy. My gravies. We're going to take so y'all with us. We'll see what we're going to buy. Hang tight, y'all. Five, ten, ten. I got five all over the place. Somebody step up. Ten, now fifteen. Eight, ten, now fifteen. Ten, you say ten? Yeah. I'm with you. Ten, fifteen. Eight, ten, now fifteen. Ten, now fifteen. Fifteen, now seventeen and a half. Seventeen and a half, now twenty. Eight, twenty, now two and a half. Two and a half, that's worth it. Twenty, now two and a half. Can't buy them in the store for even close to that. Eight, ten, now twenty, two and a half. Hey y'all, so this is an angle you don't see me at often. You're right in front of my kitchen sink. Right here is my kitchen sink. Um, I am trying to clean this kitchen up from this morning. Bryant decided, as you saw, that he wanted to go to a an auction sale. And the auction sale started pretty early. Well, he didn't decide until I had already started breakfast. So we had to eat and run basically so I left the auction sale a little early I drove separate I mean, yeah I drove separate I left to come home a little early so I could clean a little bit um, we all we have somewhere else to go tonight um, someone in our church is having a fish fry so we're going to that but um, as soon as they get back front did buy a cow he only bought one um, he could have bought more but he likes a certain weight of a cow like a certain size and the other ones were all a little too big and so he only bought one so they're gonna come home get the cow trailer and go back and get the cow and um, he did buy oh goodness some odd and end stuff I think either it was a grinder or sander I'm not sure he bought a sledgehammer I saw an extension cord, a box, you know, a box lot that just had a bunch of little tools in it, and I don't know what else he bought, but uh, he did buy a few things. I did not buy anything. I helped Caroline watch the boys, and yeah. So that's all I did at the auction sale. I didn't buy anything for me, personally. I really didn't see anything. They really didn't have any, what I call girly things, like kitchen stuff or trinkets or dishes or anything like that. Um, Caroline bought a galvanized tub that had some patina on it, some rust, some, um, and she likes to take pictures. So she bought that as a prop for pictures. Um, what else? I think that's all they bought. 
unless they bought more after I left because I did leave early. So anyway, I'm here cleaning up and we'll wait for them to get back, back here. And as soon as they get back here, I'll let Isaac tell you what he thought of Red Eye Gravy. If you've never heard of Red Eye Gravy, it is a Southern staple. Although, like I said, Bryant is not, I mean, he likes it. Bryant likes it. He would just rather have thick, like sausage gravy, sawmill gravy, you know, that type, that type gravy. Um, there's nothing thick about red eye gravy. That's not really a gravy. I'm not sure why they call it a gravy, um, cause it's not thick at all. But, um, I, I'll tell you, Isaac really liked it, but I'll let him tell you about it and kind of describe it to you. So, all right, we'll see you when Isaac gets here. Okay, y'all, so Isaac has gotten back. Um, Bryant's already left to go back to get the cow, but Isaac stayed because he's got to go rake hay. Um, we're almost, I mean, like, almost to the end of the hay time for this year. Almost. It's like in sight. So, anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around. There he is. We're going to ask him. Isaac, inquiring minds want to know what your opinion was of the red eye gravy that you had for the first time this morning at breakfast. It was very unique, but delicious. I put it on my eggs, I put it on my biscuits. I put it, I put it on everything. I even put it on top of the, the country ham. <laughs> it was good. I took a spoon and I slurped some up. It was really good. I never had anything like it, but I, I really liked it. Did you tell me I could make it at every breakfast that I had country Every ham? time she makes country ham, I wanted to make it from now on. Okay. There you go. A country staple is a hit in our house. Um, so, red eye gravy. All it is is country ham drippings and bits and grease and coffee. That's it. That's it. Okay, so go make you some red eye gravy. And I'll be back for whatever's next. I know we have a fish fry this evening. So, I don't know what else is going to happen today, but I'm bringing you along for it. Hey guys, I just heard from Bryant that he is fixing to pull up with our new cow. So I thought I'd come out here and we would just get a good video. I'm going to come on this side of the... There she comes. Oh, she's pretty. I'm going to come on this side of the... She looks like a panda bear. We need to call her panda. Especially this eye. Oh, she's pretty. Hey, girl. Hey, panda bear. You pretty girl. Okay, guys, we are we are going to a fish fry and we have just arrived and I want to show you this pond. It's amazing. Hey everyone, welcome to Couch Time. Hey everybody, happy Sunday afternoon. I think the last thing they saw was the pond at our friend's house that we went to the fish fry at. Absolutely gorgeous. I got so carried away with visiting and with the eating and the food um, that I didn't film anything past the pond. <laughs> so that was right when we first yes, got there. That's when we first got there. So I didn't get, it was wonderful. The food was delicious. It was really, really, really good. So it's really good. Thank you. You guys know who you are for inviting us. So. Yes. But anyway. Um <clears throat> we're having our coffee and today we are doing salted caramel coffee. Salted caramel coffee. So what do you think? I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yep, I like it. Yep, so far that's probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. We've done the pumpkin spice, did not like that at all. And then vanilla nut coffee, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But today is the salted caramel so far. Hard to go wrong with yeah, caramel. Yeah. So um, I, I've got a couple of things I know they've asked about in a lot of the comments. What did I keep from that JB Style box? Um, Y'all... I sent it all back, but I regret it. 
I should have kept the pleather joggers. I should have kept them. I didn't see them. He's, Just on the video. Yeah, and yeah, and people in my church were like, "Tell me you kept them," and I'm like, "No, I sent them all back." So I probably should have kept them and the t-shirt, but I sent it all back. So, but they are sending me right back out another box. So uh, as soon as I get that, I'll share that with you. Um, I even went, several of you said you went on the website to look for those joggers and um, you couldn't find them. And you see pictures of them, but they don't actually have them like listed for sale. And I couldn't either because I was going to ask, go in and just purchase them since I regretted sending them back. Um, but yeah, I couldn't find them either. So who knows? But yeah, I should have kept them. She should have kept them. I should have kept them. Should have kept them. But anyway. She's um, living a life full of regrets. Regrets. No regrets. No regrets. But um, anyway. And you got to tell them the inside joke to that. Oh, there's a commercial about a <clears throat> tattoo. And they the guy's getting a tattoo. And the, the tattoo, he's supposed to say no regrets. And the guy spells it wrong. It says no regrets. Yeah. You've probably seen that commercial. But um, anyway, the other thing that you're probably wondering about is what I decided to do with my hair as far as the short haircut. I'm getting it. I already have my um, appointment scheduled. It's not for another week or so. So it's not anytime like in the near future. I did fix my hair kind of pushed behind my ears today to, I don't know if it was to get people around me used to the style or if it was for me to get used to the style to see if I would like it. But I do. Um, and this is not it by any means. I could, I can't recreate it with longer hair but anyway um i just wanted to see what i what it looked like away from my face and um i actually like it so um looks good yeah so it, it is scheduled if i don't chicken out between <clears throat> now and then it is scheduled so been a busy week big week yes it's been a busy week um we made that delicious breakfast on here a while ago yep. it was so good the fried pork chops yes and Fried cabbage. Oh, yes. Y'all got to try the fried cabbage. It is so good. And somebody said they put bacon in theirs. Oh, yes. We've done that, too. That is delicious. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And you've used bacon grease to fry it. Oh, yeah. Bacon thing. grease to fry it in. I mean, the, the so many variations options. are endless. Some might, one of your viewers, I think, said they used beef broth before. Oh, yeah. Which that would be really good. Yep. <clears throat> Anything you do, to put your personal touch on it that works for your family, so and what your region of the area is used to tasting, the flavors you used to. Anything you can do to kind of uh, add it toward that region. And when you're frying it this way, you can control the doneness. It doesn't get mushy. Like if you the like a, the if, density. Yeah, if you like a little bit of a bite, a lot, like not quite as soft, then you just quit <coughs> cooking it. <coughs> Excuse me. Is early, so it's not like it's <laughs> it's not like it's stewing down and getting all mushy. Now, mm -hmm. But if you like it soft, you just keep cooking it and yep. frying it till it gets soft. So it's delicious. Yep. So really, really good. I was thinking, what it was the red eye gravy. Isaac wanted to try the red eye gravy. He yep. loved it. I'd had it. He absolutely loved before. it before. That was a staple when we had country ham. So do uh, you know what I put it on? <clears throat> what? Can look. Oh, yeah. I poured on cantaloupe. We've not had a good cantaloupe this year. We have not had a good cantaloupe. No. Of course, we hadn't bought too many. No, and, and our, we didn't really do anything in the garden, so. Yeah, so. Um, you got some, coming up next week, we've got some um, apple, obviously, some apple stuff coming up. Hey, you saw, you guys saw the trip, Yeah, right? that was on this video. Um, and some canning coming up. Um, some cooking. I think I want to make a loaf of bread. It's been a while since I've made a loaf of bread. And tomorrow we roll our last fields of hay for the year. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No more hay until May 15th next year. Hallelujah. So let me say that's October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Seven, Seven months. months off. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. But we'll be feeding hay yeah, be, all through the winter. Be, we'll be feeding hay. Yep. So we'll still be playing with hay. <clears throat> I'll, I'll start about November the 20th, usually about when I start. And I'll feed hay till about the first week of April. Yep. So that's usually how it goes. Hey, if you didn't get a chance to join us in the service today, we had a powerful service. I thought it was just really good. 
Uh, the worship team did a great job as always. <clears throat> and today I kind of kept the revival theme going. We've had revival last week. And I dealt with the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins that's talked about in Matthew chapter 25. Basically what happened was these ladies were ready for the bridegroom to come back, which the bridegroom is symbolic of Jesus Christ to, to take believers home to the marriage supper of the Lamb that's described in the book of Revelation. And <clears throat> as the brides are waiting on the bridegroom, the Bible says they don't know the day or the hour that he's coming back. So they got to be prepared. So basically what I dealt with today is being spiritually prepared for the return of Jesus. Um, I leaned into the fact that we have no idea when he's coming back. It could be today, could be tomorrow, could be 10 years, could be 100 years, could be 1,000 years. <clears throat> All Even, we do know is we're one day closer than we yeah. were yesterday. Although I don't think it's going to be 1,000 years. Although I don't think it's going to be 100 years, he's God. He can do whatever he wants to. He don't have to check with me. It's his plan. It's not his. It's not my plan. And so, uh, therefore, he is ultimately in control of all things. The five foolish virgins, <clears throat> when, they, when the word got out, the bridegroom was coming and, and the trumpet sound, so to speak, their lights went out of their oil lamps because they had no reserve oil. All the other ladies had the reserve oil. And I talked about today how the oil was a representation of the presence of God. We see that multiple times in the Old Testament, multiple times in the New Testament, how the oil is symbolic of the presence of God. The priest used the oil as the presence of God. Uh, so many multiple times we see that. And so what I think the scripture described today was people who say they're ready for the return of Christ, but they do not have the presence of Christ in their life. And so that, therefore, makes them like one of the foolish virgins. Um, I talked about three fatal mistakes they made. One is they were ill-prepared. They weren't ready. They thought they were, but they were not ready. Um, the second um, point that I made was that um, they felt somebody was going to help them out. The Bible says that the, the bridegroom came, took the brides away, the foolish virgin were gone to get their oil, and they came back, and the door was shut. And my second point, do you remember what that was? I just gave him the third one instead yeah, of the second say, one. Yeah, I was going to say, that was the third one. Yeah, I jumped ahead. I'm drawing a blank I on my too. second one. <laughs> hey, that gives you a reason to go back go and watch Broward's it. Go to Facebook. Broward's Facebook and watch it. Does it come to you very quickly? No. It's eluding me as well. So anyway, it was a good one. If I think about <laughs> it. It was a good point. If, I think, it, if I think about it before we get off, I will uh, I'll share Shout it with it you. So, uh but anyway, it was a great service day. Things went well. And I just pray that you're ready. Um, and that scripture basically talks about that everybody that says they are, are not necessarily ready. And so don't miss the second coming of the Lord, whether it's through the rapture of the church or whether it's through a physical passing and a physical death. Don't be ill-prepared. Have the presence of Christ in your life and don't miss his coming. So, that's right. Hey, that's what I got for the sermon recap today. Thank you guys for uh, for checking in with us. Thank you for watching the video up until this point. Many of you guys love the sermon recap, and we like bringing it to you. So, what you want to share before we head out? Nothing. We just I, I've just got lots of fun stuff. So, you know, I want to make a loaf of bread tomorrow. I really think I'm going to make a loaf of bread. She's um, gonna make a loaf of bread. Yeah, and when I made our breakfast the other day, I was I. Thought I really miss cooking this way. <laughs> she was bad. She was real, <laughs> really bad. Real bad real Not bad. only do I miss cooking that way, but I miss eating that way too. Two biscuits. Two. I made two ingredient biscuits. Y'all just saw that again. Three biscuits. How many biscuits did you eat? One and a half. Oh, one and a half. Okay. Well, at breakfast. She's been still. <laughs> <laughs> she's been steering clear of bread because of her dieting. Yes. And uh, she fell off the wagon Saturday. Yeah, I did, but that, but it was a good breakfast. Good breakfast, sausage <laughs> gravy. It was a good breakfast. It was good. So, so yeah. Anyway, I got to get back on, but I do want to make a um, loaf of bread tomorrow. I'm going to do some trial and error. So you, it may work and it may not. <clears throat> so anyway, that's it. And apple stuff coming up. Apple butter. We're going to be making apple butter, and I'm going to show you how to make it, even if you don't have fresh apples. There's a way. And I'll tell you. I'm not going to show you, but I'll tell you how to do it. Because I'm going to be making it from fresh. From scratch yep. fresh. Yep. All right. So, I guess that's it. Yep. So, we'll see you next time. We'll see you Monday. 
tomorrow on the Farming Monsters Way. And remember, the grease is hot enough. You, you can, can fry, fry anything. anything. Bye, Bye y'all.